Honorable Chairman, Sir, members of this August House, Mike is, Mike is on. Honorable Chairman, Sir, Honorable members of this August House, as I rise to oppose this retrogressive bill, I ask why no government since 1992, when Delhi's special constitutional status was created, be it a BJP government or a Congress government, be it any other color of the political spectrum, be it the same political party, the center and the NCT, or be it different parties, not one of them has tried to overrule two constitution bench judgments. Tried, not tried to overrule two constitution bench judgments on the status. Please. Go on, go on. Quay the status of NCT. Why did no government create an authority where the Chief Minister of Delhi is in a minority? Why did no government empower two bureaucrats to overrule an elected Chief Minister? Why did no government make the Honorable LG, who is a constitutional figurehead except in three areas, into a super CM? And finally, why did no government make it available to the LG's powers to appoint heads of regulatory agencies, large number, all of Delhi, for Delhi, by Delhi, funded and budgeted by the NCT government, but the power of appointment of its heads is with the LG. Honorable members of this August House, this government and this bill has done it all. Something not done earlier. Friends, why was it not done earlier? Because, unfortunately, it is the fitrat of this control freak Sarkar, yes. whose vendetta, whose, whose, whose calling, whose visiting card appears to be vendetta, whose identity badge is of a graceless and fuming electoral loser. Yes. yes. Whose approach is to control, control and control by hook or by crook, usually more by crook and less by hook. Yes. Yes. So friends, make no mistake about it. As I will demonstrate shortly, this bill is completely unconstitutional. It is fundamentally anti-democratic. It is a frontal assault on the regional voice and aspirations of the people of Delhi. It violates all principles of federalism, all norms of civil service accountability, all models of assembly-based democracy. And of course, it violates, as I will demonstrate, the basic structure. Friends, it is not about this NCT government or that. It is the deliberate regression from a people's government guaranteed to the people of Delhi 30 years ago. And hence, it is a decimation of the most fundamental constitutional values on the basis of which 239AA and that entire chapter was passed. That is why, friends, we must all collectively rise to oppose it. Because otherwise, friends, Iqbal's words will haunt us when he talked of tarikh ki nazrein and he said, Lamo ne khata ki sadiyo ne saza paai. Friends, we must also collectively oppose it because someday this anti-federal knock will come at your door. Ye unke liye sochne ki baat hai jo is bil ka samarthan kar rahe hai ya samarthan karne ki ghoshna kar di hai. जो आज दिल्ली सरकार के साथ हैं, शायद कभी आपके पास भी जल्द ही आपके साथ भी ऐसा ही हो सकता है। सबका नंबर आ सकता है। उस वक्त जब नंबर आएगा, तो आपको सिर्फ याद आएंगे मार्टिन न्यूमेलर के वर्ड्स। वो पुराने जाने-माने शब्द हैं, लेकिन मैं दोहरा रहा हूँ। First they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Yes. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I am not a Jew. Yes. Then they came for me and for you. Yes. And there was no one left to speak yes. for us. Yes. Friends, friends, what does, let me, let me start with my two heads. What does this bill do textually first? 
And secondly, what is the consequence of that text? Let me deal with these two aspects first. Friends, this bill makes a civil services authority. And it gives the power of the power to the power of the power of the power. हर स्थानांतरण हर चीज के बारे में ग्रेड ए अफसर से लेके दानिक अफसर तक व्यापक है विशाल है कौन किसी और की सरकार में वित्त का सेक्रेटरी बनेगा कौन पीडब्ल्यूडी का सेक्रेटरी बनेगा उनके बीच में अदला बदली कब और कैसे होगी ये माननीय एलजी करेंगे निर्णय न कि चुनावित सरकार ये बड़े स्पष्ट प्रावधान है मैं अभी आपको प्रावधान के नंबर नहीं दे रहा हूं दूसरा जितने भी सतर्कता के अधिकार क्षेत्र हैं और जितने भी नॉन सतर्कता नॉन विजिलेंस वो सभी केसेस अनुशासनहीनता के विषय में सब इस अथॉरिटी में आएंगे सुझाव के लिए और माननीय एलजी के पास निर्णय के लिए इसका उद्देश्य बड़ा स्पष्ट है उद्देश्य है एक भय और हिस्टे, हिस्टेरिया का माहौल बनाना एक खौफ पैदा करना जिससे कि आप इन सभी सचिवों को कंट्रोल कर सके जो कि दिख रहा है दिन प्रतिदिन तीसरा ये अथॉरिटी में तीन व्यक्ति हैं चीफ सेक्रेटरी प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी और मुख्यमंत्री और मुख्यमंत्री को बहुत बड़ा अहदा दिया है अध्यक्ष बनाया गया है ये अजीब सा अध्यक्ष है दोस्तों कोरम है दो लोगों का ये एक चेयरमैन है बिना चेयर के मैंने वैश्विक और भूगोलिक रूप से आज तक कहीं नहीं देखा मेरे सीमित अनुभव में कि एक चुनावित चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव दो सचिवों के नीचे आएगा ये दो सचिव बैठ के निर्णय करेंगे ये दो सचिव बैठ के निर्णय करेंगे और वो मुख्यमंत्री वहां खड़ा होगा देखता रहेगा चुप्पी साधेगा या अपना डिसेंट नोट करवाएगा और उसके बाद और ये सब प्रावधान है एक एक चीज में जो बोल रहा हूं प्रावधान है उसके बाद ये निर्णय और सुझाव जाएगा पहले सुपर सीएम के पास और उसके बाद सुपर बॉस जो हमारे सामने बैठे हैं माननीय गृह मंत्री ये सब गृह मंत्रालय में आएगा चौथा 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 दोस्तों चौथा बाद में बाद में चौथा जितने बोर्ड्स हैं समितियां हैं संस्थाएं हैं वो सब और इसे बहुत हैं महत्वपूर्ण हैं अल्पसंख्यक संघ दिल्ली सूरेज बोर्ड दिल्ली जल बोर्ड सो मेनी लेबर वेलफेयर बोर्ड वक्फ बोर्ड ऐसे 20 की सूची हमने दी है न्यायालय में उन सब की बजट बनाएगा ये एनसीटी सरकार उनके काम होंगे एनसीटी के लिए एनसीटी के लोगों के लिए लेकिन उनके अध्यक्ष उनके हेड को वहीं से अपॉइंट होंगे सुपर सी या गृह मंत्रालय से पांचवा जो दूरगामी नीतियां हैं सभी सिविल सर्विस के लिए उनके टेन्योर के लिए उनके स्थानांतरण के लिए उनकी नियुक्तियों के लिए कौन सी पोस्ट नाजुक है कौन सी पोस्ट सेंसिटिव नहीं है और उपयुक्तता वर्ड इस्तेमाल किया सूटेबिलिटी उपयुक्तता इस अफसर की इस पद के लिए ये सब और हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट कौन होना चाहिए ये सब माननीय सुपर सीएम और अंत तो गतवा हम जानते हैं कि जो सब चीज करती है नियंत्रण वो होम मंत्रालय हर छोटी चीज के लिए एक हर बड़ी चीज के लिए पूर्ण रूपेण व्यापक निर्बाध टेक ओवर कब्जा निर्बाध कब्जा है माननीय प्रधानमंत्री माननीय गृह मंत्री आप जैसे उच्चतम पद पर विराजमान महानुभाव क्या आप अफसर क्लासेस के लिए निचले से निचले से लेके सेक्रेटरी तक नीतियां आप बनाना चाहते हैं कम से कम वो तो एक छोटे अहदे वाले मुख्यमंत्री के पास छोड़ दीजिए सिक्स थ्री फ्रेंड्स द सेक्रेटरी दिस इज अमेजिंग दिल्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ लेजिस्लेशन एव नॉट सीन बिल्स लाइक दिस द सेक्रेटरी ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट इज मेड इन चार्ज ऑफ प्रिपेयरिंग एंड ऑथेंटिकेटिंग एवरी मेमो इंक्लूडिंग कैबिनेट नोट नॉट बैड येट डिसग्रीमेंट बिटवीन द सेक्रेटरी एंड द मिनिस्टर हैव टू बी रिकॉर्डेड इन राइटिंग and then sent to the lg and the secretary in the act itself in the bill itself is says that the secretary may write on the note which is sent to the lg why the secretary thinks that the council of ministers is taking a decision contrary to law <laughs> <laughs> any law 
law means any law any law of india in the opinion of the secretary is being violated by the council of ministers goes to the lg it makes friends the elected government hollow a chief minister paralyzed unable to act any minister shivering before his or her secretary and the bureaucracy looking up to the lg even for sneezing and the lg of course looking up to the home minister aise halat ko dekh kar mujhe wo purana sher yaad aaya doston ek kafile walon ek kafile walon tum itna bhi nahi samjhe loota hai tumhe rehjan ne rehbar ke ishare par this bill friends eliminates two out of the three interlocking fundamental distinct chains and institutions which form the bedrock of any assembly based democracy and therefore they hit at the very root of the basic structure these three interlocking chains which are discussed in 10 paragraphs of the supreme court judgment i wish somebody had read the judgment carefully before drafting the bill are one a political executive through the council of ministers answerable to the people two a civil service answerable to the political executive and hence accountable to the people through the political executive and regulatory agencies which are an integral part of governance in any system the bill simply eliminates number 2 and 3 out of 3 it takes away 2 friends the object is not to make hamlet the prince of denmark not even the slave of denmark but to take over denmark itself <laughs> it is to make denmark a hollow shell substitute ncp for denmark its second impact is that it eliminates the accountability of the civil service completely in doing so it eliminates the very concept of westminster style democracy which delhi is supposed to be fully westminster style minus three subjects only the civil service friends after this bill will jump bend crawl answer at the behest of an external agency be it the home ministry or the super chief minister there is not even a token diarchy of powers between the cm and the lg it converts an impartial civil service into a dictatorial civil service shame it gives a real example of that forgotten serial which i love to watch and all of you have watched yes minister the civil servant is saying only no minister <coughs> remember what nehru said about the ics that time uh, indian civil service says this is neither indian nor civil nor does it provide service i am not sure how accurately it will apply in 2023 but i think he came very close to it ek mayan mein do talwar nahi hai ye case मियान भी एल के पास है और तलवार भी केंद्र सरकार के पास है मुख्यमंत्री एक कोने में खड़े होकर तमाशा देख सकते हैं सिर्फ माय थर्ड हेड ऑफ सबमिशन टू दिस ऑगस्ट हाउस फ्रेंड्स दिस बिल सीक्स टू अमेंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बाय एन एक्ट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड द डिबेट्स अंडरलाइंग इट ऑल वॉन्टेड डेली टू हैव ऑल पावर्स माइनस थ्री this bill adds a fourth to those three and it does it magically without a constitutional amendment it is indeed magic even if it is black magic because you can amount amend a constitution without a constitutional amendment absolutely black fourth decimating two out of the three prongs of a westminster style democracy which has an answerable and accountable civil service and a regulatory agency clearly violates the basic structure because the basic structure of an assembly based democracy includes these three interlocking chains i believe that that would be a very likely supreme court conclusion if at all this bill is passed fifthly it also violates the basic structure in another manner the principle of decentralized federal government that has already been a part of the basic structure from the days of bombay in 1993 around the time by the way when 239 aa was created if there is one animating bedrock philosophy underlying 239 aa it is decentralized federal governance otherwise why not keep delhi as a mere large municipality under central government's control advani ji hua karte the bahut bade adhikari aise municipal setup mein pehle why not a mere union territory you know 
there are 10 of them. Delhi is the only one, the only one to have been given the constitutional status by a constitutional amendment. No other union territory. Why? Para 77 of the 2023 judgment partly answers that. I quote, in the spiral of cooperative federalism, the Union of India must exercise its powers within the boundaries created by the Constitution. NCT Delhi, in having a sui generis federal model, must be allowed to function in the domain chartered for it by the Constitution. The Union and the NCT share a unique federal relationship. It does not mean that NCT is subsumed in the Union merely because it is not a state. This is not my word, this is the word of Uchtam Nyayale. Friends, Delhi alone, out of 10 such territories, was given this constitutional status. Not only because federalism and the aspirations of the people of Delhi were recognized, but the idea was that you will not be able to amend it out of shape, out of character, without a constitutional amendment. You don't have it today. You have a statute. This arrogant government, and this is very interesting, this arrogant government first tried it by invading Delhi's special status in 2016 and 17. Forgotten now, by executive action without even a statute. We argued and we got a 2018 first constitution bench judgment, which struck it down. It did it again by a second notification without a constitutional amendment and lost it and the judgment came in 2023, few months ago. But friends, unfortunately, there is no cap on deliberate foolishness. There is no bar to repetitive constitutional error. They have done this again. This time they have upgraded it from a notification to a statute, but still without a constitutional amendment. And even if this bill is passed, which I am sure it will not be, the result will be the same a third time. Yeah. History will repeat itself. Friends, constitutional stupidity masquerading as power is by no means a new phenomenon. Especially when reason falls on deaf ears. The result is always the same. Zihalat, Himakat, or Nafrat. Samvidhan ka basic structure, dosto, lamo ki baat nahi hai, sadiyo ki baat hai. Or agar samvidhan ko sadiyo sunegi, lame nahi. तो हम सबका उत्तरदायित्व बनता है कि हम उस संविधान की आवाज की हिफाजत करें क्योंकि अगर नहीं तो संविधान चीख चीख कर कहेगा मुझे लम्हे नहीं सदियां सुनेंगी हिफाजत से मेरी आवाज रखना आज आप केंद्र में हैं मैं आप पार्टी की बात नहीं कर रहा हूं मैं बीजेपी की बात कर रहा हूं आज आप ट्रेजरी बेंच में हैं कल कोई और होगा ये कायम रहेंगे कि ये, ये, ये कायम ये ये कायम ये, ये, ये अच्छा अच्छा किया अच्छा किया आपने हस्तक्षेप किया अच्छा किया आपने हस्तक्षेप किया क्योंकि आपके कायम शब्द के लिए मेरे पास एक जवाब है तुमसे पहले भी वो जो शख्स यहाँ तख्त नशीन था तुमसे पहले भी जो यहाँ शख्स तख्त नशीन था उसको भी अपना खुदा होने का इतना ही यकीन था बल्कि बल्कि बशीर भद्र को बशीर भद्र को कृपया भूलिए नहीं आप लोग सब जानते हैं उसको मुझे भी कोट करते रहते हैं आप में से कई बशीर भद्र को उसने ही कहा था शोहरत की बुलंदी भी पल भर का तमाशा है शोहरत की बुलंदी भी पल भर का तमाशा तमाशा है जिस डाल पे बैठे हो वो टूट भी सकती है तो इसलिए कायम शब्द का इतना अहंकार नहीं होना चाहिए सिक्सली फ्रेंड्स लेट मी रीड सम सेमिनल वर्ड्स in the 2023 judgment. Now, these are going to take a little bit of time. I, it's a longish quotation, but it's very important for this house. Ten paras, and I'm only reading selectively of the Supreme Court. It's completely forgotten. I'll read a little quick, quickly and fast. This is a unanimous judgment, not a single dissent. And these words have been ignored, and they are not my words. Even though it's long, pardon me, allow me to read it. It's the highest court of the country. In a democracy, all each word I'm reading is a, uh, is a quotation, and I can assure you these words will come to haunt you. In a democracy, accountability lies with the people who are the ultimate sovereign. The cabinet consisting of elected representatives is collectively responsible for the proper administration of the country. 
and is answerable to the legislature for its actions. The government is responsible for the decisions and policies of each of the ministers and of their departments. This creates a multi-linked chain of accountability where the legislature is accountable to the people who elected them and the government is collectively responsible to the legislature. It's quite amazing. Collective responsibility is an important component of parliamentary democracies. The day-to-day -day decisions of the Council of Ministers are to be implemented by a neutral civil service under the administrative control of the ministers in order to ensure that the functioning of the government reflects the preferences of the elected ministers and through them the will of the people. It is essential to scrutinize the link of accountability between the civil service professionals and the elected ministers who oversee them. Under the Westminster parliamentary democracy, civil service constitutes an important component of a triple chain of command that ensures democratic accountability. Har shabd ki dhajya ye bil. Har shabd ki. The triple chain of command is as follows. Civil service officers are accountable to the ministers. Ministers are accountable to parliament. And thirdly, parliament legislature is accountable to the electorate. An unaccountable and non-responsive civil service may pose a serious problem for governance in a democracy. It creates a possibility that the permanent executive consisting of unelected civil service officers who play a decisive role in the implementation of government policy may act in ways that disregard the will of the electorate. In a federal polity, a fundamental question which arises is which would be the more appropriate authority to whom the civil service officers would be accountable. Everything which the bill is saying is dealt with here. In a democratic form of government, only one more para is left, friends. The real power of administration must reside in the elected arm of the government. Subject to the confines of the constitution, a constitutionally entrenched and democratically elected government needs to have control over its administration. If a democratically elected government is not provided with the power to control the officers posted within its domain, then the principle underlying the triple chain of command of collective responsibility would become redundant. That is to say, if the government is not able to control and hold to account the officers posted in service, then its responsibility towards the legislature as well as the public is diluted. The principle of collective responsibility extends to the responsibility of officers who in turn report to the ministers. If the officers stop reporting to the ministers, or do not abide by their directions, the entire principle of collective responsibility is affected. Therefore, GNCT ought to have control over the services. Now, I know there's a statute. I'll deal with their best defense, which has been raised by the government. But first, I have read to you 10 <coughs> paragraphs. For those interested, from 102 to 111. Clearly, friends, this bill is therefore, in the light of these paragraphs, stillborn. It does not, indeed, cannot remove the basis, which is this of the unanimous Constitution Bench Judgment. These quotations I have just read are bedrock principles. This bill is simply providing provisions directly contradicting these bedrock principles. It cannot simply nullify a unanimous Constitution Bench. It must at least amount to removing its basis and rendering that judgment inoperable. I have just read to you passages which are impossible to remove the basis of. These are bedrock principles. How do you remove the basis? It is therefore trying to overrule directly a Supreme Court judgment. It therefore is an impermissible constitutional exercise if you try to nullify a Supreme Court judgment without removing its basis. It is not only ha is, does this bill insult the people of Delhi, it insults the Supreme Court. It insults our intelligence. Kabhi kabhi dil mein khayal aata hai ki jaise 1935 wale Government of India Act mein चुनाव जरूर रखे थे लेकिन पावर नहीं रखा था कुछ भी क्या यही कॉलोनियल मॉडल का आप कार्यान्वित कर रहे हैं आज इस बिल द्वारा हम आपको चुनाव दे रहे हैं पद दे रहे हैं लेकिन पावर नहीं दे रहे हैं इज दिस नॉट एन इलीगल पावर ग्रैब थ्रू द बैक डोर यस नाउ सेवेंथली फ्रेंड्स आई कम टू द मेन डिफेंस द ओनली डिफेंस ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट बिकॉज यू शुड नो दिस हाउ रॉन्ग एंड हाउ फेलेश इज दिस it is based on clause 7 a and b of the article can i just read none of you need to be lawyers to understand this the text of the and you'll get the answer automatically this is the entire defense parliament may by law make provision for giving effect to or supplementing mark the word for giving effect to or supplementing the provisions contained in the foregoing clauses and for all matters incidental or consequential thereto Friends, these words on bare text mean that to reinforce, operationalize, effectuate and implement the earlier provisions, 
which provide the entire architecture for Delhi. Parliament can make laws. This was a provision put so that every time something is to be made to fill a gap, to plug a hole, you don't have to have a constitutional amendment. Parliament is sufficient to plug that hole to reinforce the Delhi's architecture. Friends, the short point is, can you destroy or decimate that architecture and structure by resorting to a provision that says that the power is exercisable to reinforce it or implement it? Yes, Pravdhan ke saath vishwas ghat nahi hai kya? 7A and 7B were created when implementing the true letter of you could reinforce or plug the gaps without amending the constitution. It can never be used to destroy, to supersede, to bury that architecture itself. If this ridiculous interpretation is accepted, does it mean that by this brute parliamentary majority, today you have transferred services to the central government, tomorrow you will do this for each item, electricity, parks, highways, work board, labor board, then why not have Delhi as a municipality? Why create the constitutional architecture? And that too by using Clause 7, which says supplement, reinforce, implement, incidental. At the end of para 46 of the 2023 judgment, which nobody appears to have read, as far as the bill makers are concerned, it says again, if we interpret the phrase in so far as such matter is applicable in a manner, in so far as such matter is applicable to union territories, in a manner to exclude a greater number of entries than what is already excluded, that is, in addition to three, it will defeat the very purpose of granting a special status to NCT. This is the Supreme Court in Para 46. In other words, friend, this government, like Alice in Wonderland, says, words will mean what I say they will mean. That's their interpretation of seven. I will use seven as a Brahmastra, not to supplement and implement 239AA, but to supplant it, to reduce it to vanishing point. The scalpel created to heal, to cauterize, to cure, to fill gaps, to make you more healthy, will now be used to stab <coughs> and kill. Obviously, only Alice in Wonderland in this government is on the same page on this. Dosto, ye sab pravadhan jaise clause 7 hai, aur is tarak prakar ke pravadhan kai jage hote hai, aam cheez hai. लोगों की आवाज को ज्यादा सशक्त बनाने के लिए है विकास और समृद्धि की गति और दिशा को प्रोत्साहित करने के लिए है न कि वोट डालने वाली जनता को निहत्ता बनाने के लिए उसको बेबस करने के लिए इस बिल ने ऐसे सभी उद्देश्यों को अपने माथे पे उल्टा करके लग दिया है संविधान को इस प्रकार से विकृत करेंगे आप तो परवीन शाकर के शब्द पूरी तरह से लागू होंगे ए मेरी Gulzami, eh meri Gulzami, tujhe chahe, tu, tujhe chaha thi eh kitab ki, ab samvidhan wali kitab ki baat kar rahe hai. Eh meri Gulzami, tujhe chaha thi kitab ki, ehle kitab ka magar, kya tu ne hal kar diya? Those in the treasury benches adopting this are actually distorting it out of recognition. The fundamental error of the central government and of the honorable home ministry is to confuse the existence of power with the validity of its exercise. For the last several days, we've been hearing curtain raisers coming from the Home Ministry that we have the power. We are not talking about competence. The question is, if you have the power, its existence is subject to substantive limits. Three, four minutes more. What you do not have is the power to cross, cross the Lakshman Rekha, which this bill is designed to cross. The question of competence to pass a law, which I am not at all addressing here, is quite different from whether the law is a valid exercise of such competence. Not when it violates the basic structure, not when it violates substantive provisions. Friends, the bill is designed to violate specifically all those substantive limits. This is beyond the remit of any statutory bill. Whether even a constitutional amendment can do it, we will see when they bring a constitutional amendment in a fourth round. But the statute being lower than the constitution must go. The constitution is itself challengeable if it violates the basic structure. That stage has not come. Turning now to my eighth head, and I'm finishing very quickly, just give me a few minutes more. It is convenient to forget, and this you'll be interested to know, now that we are having a bill, we tend to forget this. There were no exigent circumstances on 19th of May 
when you pass the ordinance. The Supreme Court has said in 100 judgments, you must demonstrate how, quote unquote, it is necessary to take immediate action. Immediate necessity is distinguished from mere desirability. These are not my words, they are Supreme Court words. Expression necessity coupled with immediate action conveys the sense that it is imperative due to an emergent situation to promulgate an ordinance. Now I want to tell you, on 11 May, two months ki jire aur bahas ke baad, ye constitution bench nirne diya. Six din baad, 17 May ko cabinet ne approve kar diya ordinance. Lekin parit nahi kiya, ghoshit nahi kiya. Toki wo jante the, two din bache hai abhi uchitam nyayale ke baithne ke liye. 19 tari ko uchitam nyayale avkash pe ja rahi thi. The revised time given to you, by the LOP was, one second. Some of my friends here have to donate some time. 30 minutes, you have left only 13 minutes for Mr. Chidambaram. Two minutes more, two minutes more. So you will leave yeah. 11 minutes for him? Yes, yes. Then there are other people okay. to donate time to us. There are other people. On 19th May. One second, one second. The important legislation is One second, one second. It is important that the bahas बहुत दिन के बाद बहस अच्छी हो रही है सभी लोगों को सुनने में आ रहा है और नॉलेज नॉलेजेबल है तो आप कंसीडर करिए आपके हाथ में और एक 10 मिनट एक्सटेंड कर दीजिए एवरी मिनट यूज बाय यू डॉक्टर विल कट इनटू द टाइम ऑफ मिस्टर चिदंबरम नो इनिशियली बोथ वर गिवन इक्वल टाइम then his time was increased. Manne adhyaksh, Go ahead. Manne adhyaksh, Maudet, Last one minute. Satra Tariq ko ye parit ho, ye approve ho gaya cabinet dwara. Isko aap 19 ki sham ko 5 bhe ke baad jab mein ghar ja raha tha court se kyao lai. Kyaunki aapko malum hai ki 19 tariq last day tha court ke functioning ka. Uske baad avkash thi. Kya you wait for two days fearful that the Supreme Court is sitting till 19th May. This, is this not cheap tactics and chickenry at its worst? Yeah. The deleterious, the deleterious effects of this ordinance were visible in the last two or three months it's been there. Governance is at a standstill. Two bureaucrats are threatening to take majority decisions over the chief minister's head. The LG daily trespasses in all domains of elected reps. Heads of bodies funded and operated by NCT are approved and controlled by the Home Ministry. NCT is reduced to a fiefdom of the central government. Insubordination is at its peak. हमारी बात आप सुनते हुए बस अंत कर रहा हूँ एक मिनट में हमारी बात तो आप सुनेंगे नहीं सुनते नहीं हैं कम से कम अपने मार्गदर्शक मंडल की बात तो सुन लिया करिए या कभी कभी उनसे बात करते हैं पूछते हैं उनको भी भूल गए आप लोग मार्गदर्शक मंडल से बात कर लीजिए क्योंकि आपकी सरकार भारत रत्न अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी की सरकार में आपके मार्गदर्शक गृहमंत्री अडवाणी जी दिल्ली को पूरा स्टेट हुड जाने का बिल लाए थे और जब आप दो चुनाव दिल्ली के जीते इस मुद्दे पे कि दिल्ली के पास पूरा स्टेटूड होना चाहिए तो मदनलाल खुराना जी आपके पूर्व मुख्यमंत्री ने कहा था कोट फुल स्टेटूड फॉर दिल्ली इज द रेमेडी फॉर ऑल इट्स इल्स आज देश और दिल्ली आपसे फुल स्टेटूड नहीं मांग रहा है आज सिर्फ वो इतना विनती कर रहा है कि जितना बाएं हाथ दाएं हाथ ने संविधान ने दिया है उतना बाएं हाथ से तो नहीं लीजिए इतनी छोटी सी विनती कर रहा है जहां तक दुख और आक्रोश का सवाल है ये एक दुखद और खतरनाक प्रस्तावित कानून है दोस्तों अंत करूंगा मैं ये कहकर कि ये दिल्ली के बारे में शेर बिल्कुल उपयुक्त बैठा था है ये बिल ये प्रस्तावित कानून चेहरे पे सारे शहर के चेहरे पे सारे शहर के गर्द मलाल है जो दिल का हाल है वही दिल्ली का हाल है दुख दुख और आक्रोश का हाल है